Ni Hao, Zhao Zhang Hao, good morning. We hail this as a triumph of media diplomacy between our beloved nation and China. Indeed, what great wonders genuine collaboration can do between our peoples. Today, we prove that with sincerity and willingness, nothing is impossible. This is an exciting chapter in the diplomatic history between our nations. We thank China daily for offering and extending its hand in friendship. Now, we look with more optimism to other interesting fora by which we can possibly build upon this potent chemistry between our peoples. As I was preparing this message, I was able to read a 2014 op-ed in the China Daily, which talked about the constructive role of global media in public diplomacy, particularly in the expansion of common ground for promoting peace and harmony. It attests to the true spirit of the media as an intermediate agency. The esteemed writer recognized that the wonderful synergy that media is capable of working upon on bilateral ties can be maximized when combined with cultural programs and people-to-people -people exchanges, as well as public awareness campaigns. At no time are these lessons more appropriate than today. What we are doing now precisely exemplifies the kind of effort that can yield the optimum efficacy of media diplomacy. So, kudos to China Daily for taking this giant leap of faith toward the right direction. But on the other hand, the writer warns too of possible detrimental effects. I venture to use this example. Just two days ago, our country commemorated the third anniversary of the devastation of Super Typhoon Yolanda, or Haiyan, upon our people and our communities. As many will remember, after the onslaught of Haiyan, donations from the international community came pouring in, quite surprisingly and off-puttingly, China's donations was brought up and criticized in the media after being compared with those made by other countries. The sad part was that the local reports were picked up by Chinese media and, as expected, invited critical responses, some of which portrayed us as bitter and ungrateful. Fast forward two years later, it would turn out that China would be one of our biggest donors as confirmed by official reports. For me, this entire episode was deeply saddening as it was embarrassing for us for the simple reason that we are Filipinos. Filipinos are not and will never be ungrateful people. In truth, we are all raised to be very appreciative of others' efforts. Utang na loob, or debt of gratitude, is a highly cherished Filipino virtue. Also last month, we saw the results of a survey which appeared to show how modestly, to put it mildly, Filipinos trust China. Again, this revelation is another unfortunate disservice to our own selves because it is not genuinely reflective of the real status of the relationship between our countries. It does not paint the whole picture of the storied relationship between our two peoples, our economies, our cultures, and our histories. If we really think about it, the survey result was based on mere perception. It was not anchored on any critical and analytical study or commentary on the totality of our relationship with China. Just for proper context, as shown in the survey itself, the public's perception of trust in China apparently has been in the negative territory way back in the late 1990s. So, to be more accurate about it, this negative trust rating has been lingering in the minds of the Filipinos for almost two decades. We all know what the main reason for this is, but this should not be reason enough for us not to trust entirely. As one Chinese official has correctly put it, our territorial dispute should not be the sum total of our relations. While our official diplomatic relations may only be 41 years young, our trade and cultural relations go way, way back. It was in the year 982 AD, to be exact, 
after rechecking my history. In short, our relationship with China easily predates our contact with other countries by at least half a millennium. We boast of a large, highly influential, integral, and indispensable Chinese community which has not only brought pride and inspiration to our country, but is also, hands down, a singularly formidable driver of the Philippine economy. We observe and celebrate Chinese traditions, beliefs, and practices. Oh, how we love Chinese food. We love to visit and shop in China, too. I cannot think of another country in whose name and honor we even unofficially create towns and affectionately call them Hello. Chinatown. These are but snapshots of the whole picture of how deeply ingrained, how healthy and stable our relationship with China really is. Thus, we owe it to ourselves and our future generations to rectify this sad situation. We have to work on it as a nation, as one people. The situation cannot just be conveniently blamed on the sitting president let alone on one who has just assumed office four months ago. We are all in this together. We all have distinct roles to play in this exercise. In the sense, we are all unofficial ambassadors of goodwill for our country. We are a kind, hospitable, compassionate, and reasonable people. Let us prove how good a people we are. Let us do the right thing and start by becoming more conscious of the need to start fixing and mending our dented relationship. This brings us back again to the need for public awareness campaigns. As so, insightfully suggested by Mr. Yang Sang Ma in 2014. And so, we hope that this laudable effort, especially during this period of rebuilding and renewal, will be replicated throughout the country. We hope that it will set off a chain reaction headed for the desired direction, healthily infused by the intention of solidifying our fellowship that was bound through the mists of time. While it is true that our foreign policy should always advance the national interest, our interests are bound to meet at certain points on which we have fundamental agreement. Through this form, not only are we able to know how to redefine cooperation between our two countries in this new era, we are also able to prove the unassuming yet effective role of media in our public diplomacy. To end, we call to mind the story of the two star-crossed lovers, even Romeo and Juliet, whose families were embroiled in a bitter squabble did not let the hostility and negativity weigh down upon their budding chemistry and hold back their fledging love for one another. And the rest was history. Now, there is a love story that is as immortal as it is unforgettable. Let us strive for the vaunted win-win cooperation between our two nations. As in any relationship, we can start with constant communication characterized by openness, cordiality, sincerity, and mutual trust. We hope for the very best. Here's to a stronger and closer ties between the peoples. Thank you.